So I um, lost it. <laughs> Carl has uh, bloat. Um, yeah. I was just wondering if you have any questions. Tell me about what this bloat is. So bloat is also known as uh, GDV, which is gastric dilation and bubulus. Uh, so basically what happens is the stomach uh, fills up with air uh, or gas fluid or anything like that after a particularly large meal, after exercising right away after they eat. And due to this, the stomach smooth muscle can no longer empty out any of the contents uh, mm. quick enough. Okay. So the stomach acts like a balloon. It expands and the stomach is a free floating organ. Ooh. So same, same as a balloon, expands and floats up. And with regards to the stomach not being attached too much, it then twists, and so it can be quite a harmful disease to your dog. Why doesn't he just fart out the gas? Um, <laughs> due to the extensive bloat to it and the twisting, it twisting. can very much block the um, emptying the uh, sphincter that's mm. connected to it, same as the esophagus. So while one of the um, clinical signs is potential trying to uh, gag and vomit stuff up, right. nothing does come out. So how do we get this fixed up? So we can perform a surgery. So as soon as Carl comes in, we can assess how much bloat it is. So we can then, we'll have to treat him for shock first, mm -hmm. because same as the um, stomach expanding and filling up, it also contracts everything else, because there's only so much room within the abdomen. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it puts pressure on the veins and arteries that are traveling ah. to the lower part of the body. All right. So he can potentially go into shock. So as soon as we see Carl, we have to treat that um, before we do anything, so that way we can properly assess him. We can take radiographs to determine if there is a twist. Uh -huh. And if there is, then we can have a surgery performed to um, decompress the stomach, as well as the vet will detwist the stomach on the correct uh, rotation. Right. And then we can perform a surgery that will adhere the stomach to the lining of the abdomen, abdomen, abdominal wall. <laughs> Um, what kind of shock is he going to be in? Um, I learned about shock on Google. Okay, he can go into hypovolemic shock, which is a decrease of mm. oxygen. That's correct. I learned that on Google. Okay, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, but you also have hypotension, which is a decrease in blood pressure. Okay. So that's going to be within the lower part of the body because it blocks the, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the superior vein cava. I, I have heard about it. Okay. Yes. Do you have any okay. other questions? Um, yes, yeah, so what's the chance that he's going to survive this surgery? So and how much is it going to cost me? <laughs> the cost is quite extensive. It's um, about a $2,000 surgery, unfortunately. Jesus. Uh, the surgery does, the gastropexy is what it's called, which is an adhesion of the gastrointestinal to a uh, fixation, so mm -hmm. the lining of the abdomen. It does reduce the chances of gastric dilation um, by 80%. Right. Um, to as low as 3 to 5%. So is this blow going to happen again if if he gets doesn't get the, the stomach sewed to the abdominal wall? There is a potential. There is a potential. Um, after we decompress and rotate, if that's what you would only like to do, we can don't, don't have to worry about the gastropexy. There is a chance because more dogs are prone to it, such as ones that have already developed it, mm -hmm. ones that have already gone through it. Um, same as any large or giant breed dogs with any deep chests. Okay. So he's been having these symptoms for like five days. I just have been on a bender and I haven't bothered to bring him in. What's his chances of survival? Chances of survival at that point are very slim due to this being a very high emergency um, uh, procedure. Because of the twist in the stomach, because of the constant pressure on that stomach, the lining itself is liable to tear, mm. which will then cause the contents of the stomach to leak into the abdomen themselves. So at that point, we only have about a two to four hour limit mm -hmm. of when these symptoms start showing to potentially So I probably should have brought him in on the weekend. Yes, you should have. Damn it, I knew it. I told my old man that, but he just didn't want to bring him in. Well, that I understand. <laughs> Um, so, he'll survive the surgery 
And what's what do we look at survival time after that, like if he survives the surgery? So we will keep him overnight for about a day. Um, we will introduce food to him um, a day after his surgery is done, so that way we can assess him. We will reduce his exercise, keep him more within his um, own cage area rather uh -huh. than about and about due to the um, very uh, invasive procedure. Okay. We will be given half meals until we are able to slowly reintroduce larger meals. And then at about 72 hours to 48 hours, that's when we can bring him home. We'll just ask you to keep him on bed rest and um, reduce his food intake and keep watch of his water. And if he does not drink, we can definitely give him some subcutaneous fluids. Okay. And form a so if he survives the surgery, is he going to be good? Yes. All right. All right. Good. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. So one more question. Uh, can I make payments? Can I give you $20 today and then just keep paying you $20 till it's paid for? I will have to talk to my manager <laughs> with regards to that and my hospital supervisor, but we do have payment plans. Love it. I will just have to get everything filled out and forms. Great. Thank you for your time. You're very welcome. Let's do it. <laughs> I want to be receptive. Okay. <laughs> Ready. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so I noticed your dog has arthritis of sternum. Yeah, the bastard's been just <laughs> scratching at his ear and it's really bugging him. Oh no. Okay. Well, just to let you know, arthritis of sterna is a disease in the inner ear canal, in the external ear canal. And, um, yeah. Did he catch it from the neighbor's dog? Um,. He could have. It's hard to say. There can be a lot of um, factors leading up to it. He could have gotten, if they were rubbing heads or something, bacteria or whatever could have gotten into his ear or something. Depends if they were playing or not. Like, if it was just, like, them running around, they probably wouldn't have gotten mm. So what do I do for this? Is it going to cost me a lot of money? Um, it shouldn't. There is lots of treatments that we can give for this, like antibiotics and everything to clear it up. Um, a big thing would be cleaning the ear regularly. Oh, right. And okay. preventing it is also a big factor as it can like continuously come back if you don't treat it properly. So um, some, of, some of the diagnoses we can do are uh, skin scrapings of the ear flaps. Um, skin biopsies or obviously a microscopic ex exam to determine what type of bacteria and everything are in it to get the right antibiotics to clear it up. So what's the best way? What are we going to do today to find out what's wrong with the exact cause? Um, so we will Keep in mind I want to be cheap. Okay. So the best thing to do would be to take an ear swab mm -hmm. of your ear and do a microscopic exam. All right. So what are we looking for? So we're looking for bacteria, yeast, and everything that could be contributing to this disease. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's the most common thing? Am I going to see yeast uh, or bacteria? Uh, bacteria. <laughs> Perfect. He's dirty. That's what you're telling me. Yeah. Bugger. Uh, okay. So what are we going to do to cure it? So um, you mentioned a few things. What's the best route or common so route? So it depends on the severity of it. Um, we can do antibiotics to clear it up quickly. And one of the main things to keep it from coming back and getting worse is cleaning the ear constantly. Um, to prevent it, like if your dog gets it from other things like swimming or it could be from food allergies, um, if they get chronic ear infections, it can lead to arthritis of sterna. Um, you just want to keep it clean and dry mm -hmm. and keep the moisture out of the ear. But he loves swimming. Well, I can't keep him out of the lake. I just can't. <laughs> he won't stay out of the lake. That's fine. He's allowed to swim. Do I need to tie him up? You could. <laughs> to prevent him from swimming, you could tie him up or just... Or maybe I could put a, his head in a bag. <laughs> No, that would not be good. <laughs> but if he does end up going swimming a lot, you could 
possibly be drying his ears with a towel mm -hmm. or All right. paper towel, something like Maybe that. Maybe I could put cotton balls in his ears. That might not prevent the or water tampons. from coming in. <laughs> <laughs> tampons. It might soak a bit of the water up, but <coughs> it might still leak. Okay. How much is this going to cost me? Um, it shouldn't be too bad as long as um, everything works in your favor with cleaning the ear and keeping up to date on the antibiotics. Um, anywhere from $200 to $300, depending on um, the diagnosis, what needs to be done for the diagnosis and the antibiotics. Okay. Does he have to stay overnight? Uh, no. Good, because he wants to go home. Yeah. He told me before we came. <laughs> Okay. One of the things with otitis externa is if it gets too severe and is not taken care of, it can lead to otitis media, which oh, is man. the rupture of the Ooh. eardrum. So I have to do something then? Yes. So you want to stay on top of it. Okay. Well, thank you. These pictures are <coughs> kind of gross, just so you know. <laughs> well, we want you to Ew. know everything about it, so... <laughs> Can you show me how to clean his ears on my ears? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit different. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. That's very informative. Okay, good. Go. Well, alrighty. So we've noticed that your um, dog, Charlie, the boxer, uh -huh. has. Um, Symptoms that we believe are ulcerative <laughs> and colitis. And um, would, um, what would you like to know about the ulcerative colitis? Um, how do you know? Is it because he has the shits? <laughs> yes, it is actually. And it's because we've noticed that there is um, mucus and blood in your dog's um, feces. Mm. Um, the reason we want to, we are jumping straight to uh, your dog having ulcerative colitis is uh, the main reason we suspect it is because he is a boxer and boxers are predisposed to, to a certain type of ulcerative colitis called histiocytic oh, ulcerative colitis. Okay. Um, there is also other causes of ulcerative colitis. So there is um, some... Ulcerative colitis can be, or colitis can be a second, secondary symptom of things such as like parasites, like giardia or whipworms. I had giardia once. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not it's not fun. It's a very, very uh, bad disease. Um, <laughs> parasite. <laughs> um, but um, the reason, um, yeah. So we would want to. In most canines, we would want to rule out parasites first. But since your dog is a boxer, we believe it has histiocytic ulcerative colitis, which is not typically treated the same way as other colitises. It also does not respond as well to normal treatments for colitis. Um, it, we often... Treatments for histiocytic ulcerative colitis are, is often uh, an antibiotic called enrofloxacin. Ah. And it provides um, anti-inflammatory properties. Um, and if you didn't know what ulcerative colitis is, it is the inflammation of the colon and like you can start getting ulcers and things like that in it. So that's why we see blood in their stools and the um, like sudden urge to go to the bathroom, which might be why if you are finding accidents in your house, mm -hmm. etc. Um, but there's what we need to do to rule, to make sure that your canine has ulcerative colitis is we need to do a colonoscopy and take a biopsy of the tissue. So that's where we start? We're, we're going to do the parasite, make sure he doesn't have parasites, mm -hmm. and then we're going to do biopsies. Yes. Yeah. Um, another treatment we suggest to go along with this is taking a probiotic, since 
Um, if you're, especially if your canine needs to be on the antibiotics long term, it's always a good idea to be consuming a probiotic along with an antibiotic because antibiotics can be quite um, hard on the digestive system and even kill off some of the good bacteria, which we would give the um, probiotics to regenerate and kind of keep the, uh, keep the natural bacteria that's in there happy and okay. everything. So what am I going to see on the biopsies? Like what will, like how will I know that it's ulcerative colitis? Uh, we will see uh, histiocytes and inflammation. Um, and, okay. And then the main treatment is antibiotics, and then you said the probiotics. Is there anything else that would make them? If better? it's if it's not histiocytic ulcerative colitis, we would also try an elimination diet. See if it is something that's triggered by food. We're not going to feed them. We're no. going to eliminate them? <laughs> no. Really no. So an elimination diet is basically we are um, only strictly only feeding them certain foods. And this is like actually something that's very strict. Like your dog can't even be, there can't be like crumbs of food on the ground or anything like that. Because if your dog goes around and eats those, then the elimination diet has to start again from the beginning because we need to have it set for a certain amount of time where they're only eating a specific type of food oh, I so see. that we can eliminate what is triggering the colitis. Okay, so what's the chances he's going to get better? Um, it is a, if he has it. It is a very manageable disease. Um, however, it can. there's many levels of how how strong the onset can be or how, how bad the symptoms are. Sometimes it can be treated with a one-time treatment or it's something that they have to be on medication long-term. But it's mm -hmm. like definitely something that they can live with and it's, um, it's, it is manageable. Okay, so I don't have to kill him? No, no. Damn it, I didn't like that dog anyways. Okay. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for that information. No worries. Okay. Alrighty. Alrighty, so your dog has sarcoptic meningitis. Oh, can you go for the look? <gasps> Gee, ooh, look at that. Your Whoa. dog does not have the severity that that animal does. Is he going to look like that when he's done? No, he will look. Jesus. Like he looks like I'll take him in the back and shoot him. Okay. <gasps> so, sarcoptic mange, okay. What's causing sarcoptic mange? The um, scabii mites are actually causing the mange. I know. He's got mites? He does, but they are they are transferable to humans. Um, however, the mites burrow very deep into the skin and they're very hard to find. Mm. So it's unlikely that you have it. However, if you have been sleeping with your animal, there is the slight potential that you potentially could have got it from him. Ew, so I have it maybe? Not necessarily, unless you're showing symptoms, um, the same kind of symptoms that he's showing, then I wouldn't be too concerned. Uh, okay. All right, so how are we going to find these things? I want to see them. Okay, so we will do our best to try to find them. We're going to do, um, ideally we're going to do skin scraping. They're very, very hard to find. However, we will treat them mm -hmm. because we, because your dog is showing signs towards scabies, it's hard, it's hard to find the mites in the skin scraping. Um, but we will treat them as if they do have them because they're hard to find. And I actually have an image on the back in case we can't find them. Ooh, yeah. look at that. It's kind of cool looking, but that's disgusting. And we will also be doing fecal tests on your dog as if he's eaten or by chance and like inhaled any of the mites, he potentially could have moved them through his bowels and we might we'll be able to find their species. Yes. Lovely. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so what if we can't find them, but we're pretty sure he has this? We will still treat it because it can cause um, further skin issues than what he's already having. Mm. So we'll treat it as if he does have it. Um, to, first off, we will um, kind of check to see if he has kind of any food allergies while we're treating the scabies, because food allergies could actually cause the same symptoms. Mm. but. So far from what we're seeing, we're kind of thinking it's scabies, so we're going to treat him as if he does have... So we have to give him a pill? Um, so the best way to treat it, actually, is with um, lime sulfur dips. 
which is almost like a bath. I have yeah. to bath him. Yes. He's an idiot. I can't bath him. You could bring can him. you bath him? Yeah. You can Perfect. bring him to the clinic for free. Um, not for free, unfortunately. Um, I and bet. <laughs> sorry. But um, he'll also need oral medication, so then we're kind of fighting from the inside and the outside. It'll hopefully kill off the larvae, and then the scrub should help kill off the adults as well as the yeah. larvae. Yeah. What kind of medication are you giving him um, orally? Ivermectin. Ivermectin. Yeah. Ivermectin, they say <laughs> in Scotland. <laughs> All right. Any more questions? Okay. So we're gonna, you're gonna bath him for me. Yeah. For free. N not for free, <laughs> but uh, we'll do our best. Whatever. <laughs> I, I recorded it that you said you do it for free, just oh, so you know. Oh, okay. uh, and we're going to give them Avermictin. Yes. How long do I have to give them that for? Um, it, that will be up to the vet, depending on how he, um, long he decides. It's usually we'll start off with a, a certain set amount and then see how the progression is, has come along since the beginning. Mm -hmm. And if we feel that there still kind of seems to be some symptoms, we'll continue on with the, um, with okay. the preventative. So, what do I have to do at home? Is there mites um, in my house? Um, mites can actually only live for 24 hours off the animal. However, if you do have a cat, they could be a carrier of them. They won't in infect. Cats. Okay, then I'm assuming you don't have a cat. Nope. That's good. So, I I'm going to suggest if you have any other animals to bring them in, we'll get them checked to see if they have any. But you can clean his bedding. It doesn't live for longer than 24 hours. However, I'm going to suggest if he's sleeping in bed with you, I'm going to suggest kind of crating him at night just to avoid any spread while we're trying to treat it. Okay. Cool. I think that sounds pretty damn fine. Yeah. Mm. But he should make, he, he'll make a full recovery because he's not, he just has the beginning of it. So he's not showing any signs where we're concerned about his health. So he should make a full recovery and his fur should completely grow back. Can you treat me at the same time? I, unfortunately, we, I do have a little bit of a rash right here on my butt. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm not qualified to treat humans, but I'm sure if you went to your doctor and All mentioned right. it, I'm sure he would be glad to help. That's pretty Love it. Thank you. You're welcome.